Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, I hope everyone had a good week. And I thought this weekend we talk about different kinds of cameras or the different kinds of cameras I use and why I use them. So uh, let's jump right into it. All right guys, so jumping right into it, let's start off with uh, the simplest camera that most everybody has. And that would be an iPhone or a Google Pixel or a Samsung or an Android. Um, any camera phone that you have on you is a great, uh, it's beginning camera to be honest, because what you do is when you use camera phones, you're focused on sort of the fundamentals of photography, like composition, background, color, um, and just simply taking shots for the mere joy of taking shots. And honestly, the biggest, biggest advantage of using a camera phone is it's always on you. And that's the best camera you can possibly have is the one you have always on you because you'll find yourself constantly taking shots just because it's so convenient um, to shoot with a camera phone. Uh, it has the added benefit of you can shoot and immediately upshare to your social media networks like Instagram and Facebook. There's no need to uh, take, let's say, photographs off of a computer and then get it onto your phone and then from your phone uploading to some of these social media sites. So I think um, in those instances when you want convenience, when you want to travel light, uh, when you want simplicity, and when you want to just focus on the basics of photography, uh, a camera phone is a great uh, tool for any photographer, any upcoming photographer, and even the pros. So uh, that's an iPhone or a camera phone. All right, so next on the list, moving up the list, we will move from a camera phone to a point shoe camera. Now, usually point and shoot cameras will shoot a little bit better quality than your iPhone. Um, and point and shoot cameras are great sometimes if you wanted to go to like a concert event. A lot of times concerts don't let you in with professional DSLRs, meaning any camera where the lens disattach or comes apart from the body, um, where you have interchangeable lenses basically. Um, but a point and shoot camera, is allowed in concert venues. So there are some pretty powerful point and shoot cameras out on the market. And for those instances when you want a little bit better quality than your iPhone, um, you don't want to carry around something as big and bulky as a DSLR. Or when you are in instances, like I said, like a concert where you cannot take a professional DSLR, a point and shoot camera is a great camera to take. Um, <clears throat> and right off the bat, thinking about it a little bit more, uh, point and shoot cameras are also great for travel. Um, when you're traveling, especially as a photographer, you have a tendency to want to take like a whole bunch of photos, um, but it kind of takes away from the trip or the vacation. So a point and shoot camera is a way for you to still kind of enjoy the moments, uh, enjoy your trip, enjoy your vacation, but have something that has pretty decent quality um, so when you find yourself in instances and in great exotic locations and you want to take some cool pictures, um, having a great point and shoot can come in really handy where again, it's better quality than your iPhone, but not as big and bulky as a DSLR. All right, guys. And finally, let's talk DSLRs. Um, right off the bat, one of the biggest advantages of DSLRs is image quality. Uh, the better DSLR you get, whether it's a micro four thirds, um, APC size sensor or full frame sensor DSLR, basically a DSLR will just give you that best image quality. Um, the downside of the DSLR is obviously it's, it's bulkier. Um, it's not as easy to travel with, um, like for instance, when you compare it to your camera phone or a point and shoot camera. A DSLR has uh, interchangeable lenses. So typically it's not just the bigger body you're carrying, but a selection of lenses, uh, depending on what you're shooting. Um, but that is the number one reason. It's the flexibility of the interchangeable lenses. So you might use certain lenses for portraits, certain lenses for landscapes, um, certain lenses perform better in low light. Um, some zoom lenses give you more versatility to cover events. So having a DSLR gives you that um, versatility to switch out all these lenses depending on what you're shooting. And again, we go back to the image quality. Um, Another downside of a DSLR, just to show the pros and cons, is with a DSLR, if you are sharing images to social media, there's extra steps involved. So you're typically shooting on a DSLR, 
offloading the images from your camera to your computer, editing on your computer, getting the pictures back off of your computer onto your phone, and then being able to upload those shots to social media sites. So there are extra steps involved when you use a DSLR camera, but it's worth it because again, you get that top-notch image quality. Um, so for me, again, uh, if I were to sum everything up here, that is the benefit of the three cameras. And I use all three. There's times when I'm only shooting with an iPhone, when I just want the convenience, portability, and I don't feel like lugging around things. I'm using point and shoot cameras, like if I'm traveling or at concerts or in areas where you cannot take a professional DSLR. And then lastly, I'll use DSLRs specifically for like client work, professional jobs, uh, when I want top-notch image quality or the ability to change lenses. Um, but that kind of like wraps it up on the, the kind of tools that photographers are using and amateur photographers are using. And I think going forward next week, we'll start diving into maybe some of the lenses that I use and, and why I use it. And we're kind of building on that foundation here of, you know, how to just up your photography game and take those better quality shots. So on that note, I'll see you guys next week and we'll continue this conversation. All right. Thank you.